Um, I have another set of friends like that in, this in the Mellon Fellowship that I got as an undergraduate. These are people who are just immensely important to me for keeping just a peer network of, of excellent people who I know support me, who I know are rooting for me, who are also trying to be role models to succeed in their field. Um, I strongly encourage you to find people like this. You know, you meet them every three months and just rejuvenate yourself, get some support up again, and then go back to where you have to be. Uh, and the last challenge is, is, I mentioned, just balancing family and career. I mean, especially, I know a lot of women who are in physics uh, worry about not going into the field or in the sciences, uh, don't want to go into the field because they think they can't have families, they can't spend time with their kids, uh, they don't want to do it. And um, I should say that, you know, the sciences, especially, you know, academia, is, is not, it's actually easier, I think, to have a family in academia than it is if you're a lawyer or a doctor or a professional in some sort. It's just that it's so flexible in terms of schedule that you always feel guilty about how much time you're spending in any one place because you're deciding, right? So if you decide to spend, you know, five hours with your kids one day and not work, then, you know, then if you don't get the work done, it's your fault. Or if you decide to spend all day at work and not see your kids, then it's your fault again. It's not like your boss is telling you to do it. So I think that's why people, to me, that's why people stress about it so much more. But, you know, in, in that case, Eliza picture of me and my kids. Um, you know, in that case, you just have to be hyper-organized, you know, plan everything. I, uh, you know, I had both kids in the winter because then I got the spring semester and the summer off. You know, their birthdays were December 30th and January 19th. That was not a coincidence, okay? <laughs> you know? Okay, I'm a hyper-planning person, but it's good. It helps, right? I mean, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to give you all the, but it's true. You really, I mean, if you want these things to work to the best of your ability, make create circumstances that work, that, that allow you to do what you want to do, you know. Uh, you know, make sure you have a sense of your priorities. Like I said, I decided to have two kids before tenure because I really wanted children. I didn't want to wait until I was 40. And uh, if it hurts tenure, then it hurts tenure. But that was a priority of mine. And I think it's, it's going OK so far. Um, this picture here in DC is when, when my, my second daughter was a month and a half old, uh, I was required to go to DC for a, for a big grant meeting. I didn't know, so I'm a, turn, I'm a month and a half, I didn't want to go. And I said, fine, I'll go if you pay for my babysitter to come with me. And so there's me and the, had a day off, and we went to the, the monument, and, <laughs> and that was it. You, know, you just try to make things work for yourself, and it can hopefully work out. Okay, so, so that's it. Uh, four bits of advice I've tried to follow my whole life, work hard. Um, I forgot to mention that my, my aunt always says, you know, she says to me, it's funny, the harder you work, the luckier you become. <laughs> right? Work hard. Uh, try to do what most interests you. Be yourself. Always be professional. And ask yourself, are you comfortable the worst case scenario? For me, keeping these things in mind has, has seemed to work out. And if it doesn't, what's the worst that'll happen? <laughs> Not so bad, usually. Thanks for listening. Open to any questions that you have. I can keep talking, but you probably don't want that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have undergraduates. Yeah, I've, I've almost always had two or three undergraduates working in my lab during the year and during the summer. Um, I, I really, I like working with undergraduates because for me, as I said, undergraduate research was really key to, to forming, you know, to getting experience and learning about what I liked. In, in the field, and I, I want to, I think it's important for undergraduates to have that same opportunities in my lab. Um, so, uh, so many professors will have, will, will work with undergraduate and ask them, I and mean, the key is making sure that you work in a lab that, or that you work somewhere where there's a, an actual project for you. Now, I admit, when I first hired, I've hired freshmen just to, you know, organize, to, to <laughs> literally organize screws and hardware in the lab. Right, they're freshmen. I pay them for the summer, and they go in. And if I need some, you know, labor done, like soldering or just putting things in their place, I'll have them do that. And then from there, we'll work up to, you know, if they if first summer they they organize, and during the year maybe they do some soldering, and then the next year they do some real research, and the following year they do a thesis project. Right, we sort of work their way through. So even if they have no previous experience, they can work around the lab. They can see what's going on. They can see if they're interested. They can start building up some hands-on ability, and then really take off when they're doing their real research. And so I try to think of projects like that to start people, hopefully, usually their freshman or sophomore year and continue through their senior years. <laughs> it, it takes a lot. Um, so um, each student costs about uh, $45,000, but that's 
let's see. Uh, so each, well, each student costs about 25,000, but then there's overhead on top of that. So the overhead is 50%, so it's about 50,000 for a student um, or, or more. It's going up all the time. <laughs> Uh, typical, a typical grant from the NSF might be about 100000 but then you have to take out supplies. You, know, you can't just have a student work there without having money to do their research, right? So it takes 30000 to do research. Usually you get a little bit of salary or something else out of there. So you can support one student with each grant usually. So I have, I have three different grants. Oops, I don't want that to happen. Um, I, have, I have two pretty large grants and one, one other grant. Uh, and I just got another grant to support a postdoc and some startup money. So I have about, uh, how much do I have per year? Uh, 150, 300, 400, about $400,000 in grant money per year, um, which is not quite enough. So I, to, to support my postdoc, I dip a little bit into my startup. Um, so the, four, the four, 400, 450,000 supports about, well, so we'll support about five students plus half a postdoc. And we do a lot of fabrication. I think I mentioned these nanoscale things. That's really expensive to use those facilities. And also to do things at low temperatures, at liquid helium temperatures, is very expensive as well. So um, I was very fortunate my first year I got a couple of grants. But you do have to keep, you know, to keep this level of students, you have to write a lot of grants every year. <laughs> so, yeah, that's very nice. But, you know, it, I didn't think I wanted such a big group. But then I had a lot of ideas. And I didn't want to take people off other projects. And so you just keep adding people and keep adding people. And it's out of control. And I don't know, you know, I don't know, I don't know where they all came from, honestly. They just appeared in the lab. And they're doing good work. I'm happy they're there. But they just they keep coming. <laughs> right, so, so who here is interested in graduate school? <laughs> What else? What else do you guys want to do? What is? What are your? Uh, what are you interested in doing when you graduate? Yeah, you. Okay, good. How about you? Everyone looks away. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, I'll take another question. Yeah. Did you? Did you? Were you going to say something? Yeah. And, and uh, physics, I, I was the only African American woman getting a physics PhD in 2001, I believe. I didn't know, it was funny. I, I didn't, I mean, you don't know, you're just working, and again, you, you just work, you do your stuff. I mean, that's, again, science is sort of nice that way. You know, you can be one of the few, you can do whatever, but at the end of the day, you have to get your papers out, right? So you can talk all you want about being a double minority or anything else, but all that matters at the end of the day is do you have some publications, have you given some talks, and have you written your thesis? You know? I mean, you have to get to that point. So at that point, I was just very involved in my work. I had no idea, and it was only, I think it was two years later, I was attending a talk. And it was a talk on minorities in physics. And the speaker said, you know, the numbers are so small. In fact, in the year 2001, there was only one black woman who got a PhD in physics. And I said, that's me. <laughs> so that's how I knew. <laughs> so <laughs> and now I use that in talks. So that's, I don't, actually, I, mean, I tried to look it up. I think it's a true fact. That's what he said at any rate. So yeah, but I, you don't know. I mean, you know, for all of, you, for all of us, you know, you, you do know in your local environment that you're one of the few. And like I said, you find mentors and, and, and peers. And I should mention, it doesn't mean that you don't hang out with your own lab group or the people that you work with. I mean, that's also really crucial. It's not, you know, it, it's okay to have two sets of friends, right? It's okay to have people that you work with who you're, you know, you're sort of your friends with, you go out with, you go to lunch with, you do stuff with, and have another set of friends you hang out with differently. That's okay, a lot of, a lot of us do it, right? It's not okay to just not hang out at all with people at work and only have your other friends who don't interact with anything you're working with. I think that that's, that's dangerous, right? Because a lot of a lot of professional activities happen informally. It also makes your life less fun when you're at work, right? You should find people who you get along with and you can interact with and try to make relationships with them. Um, and then you don't feel, you know, then so you don't feel like you're the only one or lonely because you have people in different places you can, you can hang with, right? So 